For a movie that goes over the top to achieve new things and exceed limitations, Avatar The Way of the Water was a costly film to make. And with this, you will be shocked to see how much each cast member was paid. Avatar 2 was meant to come out in 2014, but due to the necessary technological equipment not being available at the time, it was pushed forward to 2022. And a film that has to produce its filming equipment doesn't come cheap. There are estimates that the making of Avatar The Way of the Water cost about $250 million, of which the cast member's payment was a part, but James Cameron has refused to disclose the actual amount. When asked what the budget was for Avatar 2, James only replied that it was costly, and that Avatar 2 is one of the worst businesses in movie history, because it might not make up the estimated gain to count as good profits. Then James added that Avatar 2 being profitable can only happen if it becomes the third or fourth highest grossing movie in history, which means it has to make more than $2 billion to be considered profitable. However, while the film itself might still be looking forward to making profits, the cast members who featured in the film already made enormous amounts of money. That could even send them to an early retirement if they'd like. Sam Worthington has been with Avatar since the first part and has also reprised his role as Jake Sully for Avatar 2. And he's made quite a deal working on these projects. And in this case, it wasn't about the acting, but commitment, because Sam remained committed to the franchise ever since he was featured in Avatar 1. And James is sure that whenever Sam's phone rings to show up for Avatar, he will always be there. So, this type of loyalty isn't expected to come cheap, as he was paid around $10 million to act in Avatar The Way of the Water. And the cool thing about this is that in addition to his fees, Sam would also be getting paid a 5% share of the film's profits. Now that's huge, and he was the only cast member on Avatar 2 that got this deal to share in the film's profits. And of course, this price is higher than the amount he got paid for the first part of the movie released in 2009. Even though what he received at the time wasn't revealed, the New York Times has joked about it, saying it wasn't enough for financial security. And now it's evident that with the big budget of Avatar 2, the bar has been raised. Also, at that time, Sam exposed how his pay for the first movie wasn't enough, when he said that he had to get more deals in acting films like Clash of the Titans instead of waiting so long for him to be called to feature in Avatar 2, because he had bills to pay. The shocking thing in all of this is that this deal, and even more, almost went to another actor, Matt Damon. Matt was initially approached to play Jake Sully and was offered 10% of the profits that Avatar 1 made. And this movie went on to make more than $2 billion, which means that Matt could have made $250 million for that role. But unfortunately, he rejected the offer. Matt wasn't happy with his choice, but but then he had to decline because he was loyal to the Bourne Ultimatum franchise. Matt explained why he rejected it, saying, I would have had to screw over the people working for the Bourne Ultimatum, and I couldn't do that, ethically. So it's not like I wasn't doing anything and I just passed on Avatar. That would never have happened. Aside from missing out on that massive payment, Matt was sad that he missed out on working with the director James Cameron. According to Matt, James tops the list of directors he's always wanted to work with. And then, fortunately, this project went to Sam, but he wasn't offered the same deal that Matt was offered. Sam made much less than Matt could have even gotten in Avatar 1 and wasn't even the highest paid actor for the first film. Sigourney Weaver was paid the highest amount in Avatar 1 even though she featured in a supporting role. But now Sam is claiming that spot for Avatar 2 and even a share of the profits, which is close to what Matt was offered at the time. Still, Avatar changed Sam Worthington's life and it's understandable why he wasn't valued as the same as Matt at the time. And that's because Matt had featured in hit movies and even won an Oscar. But Sam was different. Even though he was already known as an actor in Australia, he couldn't afford a home. The actor revealed to Times of India that he was living in his car before joining Avatar. So, Avatar paved the way for Sam, and he even has gotten other deals just from having his name out there. Sam also thanked James for the opportunity when he said, he has changed my life, and I'll always be grateful for him giving me a larger-than-life role in Avatar. That's not enough. He recommended me to McG for Terminator Salvation, and now Sam's net worth has risen to 30 million. And it's likely to go higher than this once Avatar The Way of the Water Profits gets added to it. Zoe Saldana playing a Teary in Avatar 2 has also been with the franchise right from the first part of the movie. But unlike Sam, the actress got a lesser amount, which is still a huge sum of money anyway. She was paid $8 million without the option of getting any share of percentage of the profits. But then it's still even bigger pay than what she got for the first part, and her pay will keep getting better with every Avatar sequel. Zoe has been fortunate to feature in high-grossing movies 
movies like Avatar, Guardians of the Galaxy, and so on. However, her net worth remains at $35 million, which is less than that of her colleagues who have also featured in great films like her. And maybe this is why the actress feels stuck being committed to franchises. The actress said, I feel that for the last 10 years of my life, I've just been stuck. I felt stuck doing these franchises. Although Zoe is glad of the fantastic opportunities that she's gotten from these franchises, like being able to work with world-class directors, and even get to know more actors and make friends through that, she has also felt limited. And she feels as though she hasn't grown in exploring her skills, her freedom to play different roles. But then Zoe believes the future will bring many more opportunities to be more valued than she already is. Sigourney Weaver has also been with the Avatar franchise right from the beginning. But in Avatar 2, she got to play a different role from the one in Avatar 1. That's because her character was gotten rid of in the first film. But now in Avatar 2, the 73-year-old Weaver got to play Kiri, a 14-year-old girl who's much younger than she is. And for this, she got the sum of $3.5 million. However, Weaver's pay was much higher in Avatar 1, and she was the highest paid on the project as she was paid $11 million. So it's unknown why her pay got reduced this time. Weaver has been in the industry for so long she has featured in many great films and has had a blossoming career, and it's no surprise that her net worth is $60 million, which is still a lot. Kate Winslet is a new cast member in Avatar and didn't star along with the rest, but it's not her first time working with the director James Cameron, so she quite understands what this project would take, and she gave it her all. The actress got to play Renal in Avatar 2, and for her time and effort, she was paid $6 million. Her current net worth is $65 million. Stephen Lang is known for playing evil characters, and his work in Don't Breathe is one of his notable projects. In Avatar, he plays Colonel Quaritch, who's been tormenting the Pandora people from the first part of the film. And in Avatar 2, this villain is back as a Na'vi to continue making life living hell for the natives. And in this iconic role, Stephen got paid $2 million, and his current net worth is at $5 million. Cliff Curtis played the tribe chief Tonawari in Avatar 2, and he was paid $1 million for his role. Cliff is a New Zealand actor, and his net worth is $3 million. For CCH Pounder, who plays Moat, Natiri's mother, and is also the queen, her pay was $800,000, and her net worth is currently $6 million. The younger cast members of Avatar 2 also got a fair deal of money from appearing in the movie. Jamie Flatters, who portrays Natayan, the son of Jake Sully and Natiri in the film, he was paid $600,000 for this. Jamie is also known for the movie The School for Good and Evil, and his current net worth is still unknown. But with his growing fan base, his worth may be piling up just great. Another young cast member, Britton Dalton, got paid $500,000 to feature in Avatar 2. He plays Loak in the film, and his net worth remains unknown. David Joel Moore is another cast member in the Avatar franchise from the first part, and he plays Dr. Norm Spellman. The actor earned $500,000 for this, while his net worth is $4 million. The actor Jermaine Clement plays Ian Garvin, and he received $700,000 for this role. On top of that, Jermaine's net worth is $6 million. Edie Falco got paid $800,000 for her role as General Ardmore, and her net worth is $50 million. What do you think of what these cast members received for their various roles? Share your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching.